Live here. Okay. And uh, we're live. Hey, uh, good afternoon. The Florida Wrestling Room. Uh, Dan Ward back here. Uh, we're affectionately uh, starting to call this show Step to the Line, kind of a wrestling uh, thing that we've done there. And uh, here we are with uh, You Asked and You Shall Receive. Here is legendary coach Basile. So how are you, sir? How are things going? Uh, welcome. Thank you very much. I appreciate you uh, having us on. Uh, I appreciate what you're doing for the sport. You know, I mentioned to you earlier, anytime uh, we get a little bit of publicity in this sport is an awesome thing. You know, it's just not a, uh, not a mainstream sport. So it's a cool thing that you're doing. Yeah. And, and for guys like you and, and coach duck, and I've, I've got some athletes that are, have been Florida legends and, and they're right. And they're coming on and just <clears throat> to see everybody kind of come together. And I get, I get messages from, from people like, Hey, call this coach, call that coach. Here's the number, here's the contact. And, and I'm like, sure. I love it. So it, it feels like it's starting to snowball a little bit. Yeah. Um, I'm seeing more people watching it and, um, it's been awesome. So uh, before we get into a little Q&A that I have for you, um, go ahead and obviously talk a little bit about yourself, your season. Um, you're, you're, you're obviously been a Jesuit now a few years. You're rebuilding that program. Uh, you already built a program down in at, uh, at your, I think it's your alma mater, right? Yeah. Yeah. I graduated from Springstead 93 and uh... Yeah, coached there for a long, long time. I went away to college and then came back and uh, started coaching there with Coach Levia. And then um, I took a, a few years off when uh, my wife was pregnant with Ethan. And then uh, I think I was there for about 15 years prior to coming to Jesuit. Yeah, and now you've been a Jesuit since 2015, I want to say. I remember seeing. Yeah, this uh, Yeah, this was my fifth year that I was there. Um, right. So it'll be starting my sixth year there now. Yeah, so Ethan was in eighth grade when uh, when I first took over there. And you, you finally got one on Lake Gibson at the duels this year, I saw. <laughs> yeah, we're chasing them right now. You know, um, it, it, it's awesome. You know, I mean, I think those type of rivalries are the cool thing about uh, sports. You know, I think it's the thing that really, you know, motivates you all year long. You know, when I was at Jesuit, all right, at Springstead, we were kind of in that flip-flop role. You know, we had won it a few years, and they were chasing us, and we used to battle every year. Um, so it's a cool thing. You know, Walker's a great friend of mine, and uh, he does an amazing job, you know. So, um, yeah, it just makes it really fun. You know, it gives, a, gives it a different aspect. Yeah, good to have a dog to chase, so, so they say, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll be uh, catching up here soon, but uh, he's, uh, he's definitely setting the bar over there. Yeah, great state tournament for you, right? You had some some state champs. Uh, you had a lot of state placers. I saw. Um, so the year the year progressed well. Yeah, yeah, we had a lot of kids grow. You know, we got a mixed bag. We've got this um, this sophomore class I've got this year, and my son, who are kids that have wrestled their whole life, and then the other half of the team are kids we pretty much pulled out of the hall. You know, three or four years ago. You know, and. Um, those guys really made some big strides this year. I thought, you know, I mean, our, our good guys are, are, um, you know, they're good and they, and they handle business and do what they're supposed to do for the most part. Um, but I was really impressed with our younger guys. You know, I think they really grew a lot this year and, um, you know, started to catch up and, and, um, kind of, you know, absorb some of that middle ground where, you know, before those, those younger guys were really a level above them, but, uh, they stepped up well and wrestled good at the state tournament. Yeah. Your, your son and Kai are pretty good wrestlers. They're not bad. They're not bad. You know, I mean, uh, it really just comes down to, you know, they, they've put in a lot of time, you know, all those guys have, you know, they've been wrestling since they're five years old and uh, been all over the country. I've had great coaching, you know, have got good parents and good support, you know, so it's just one of those things. I think if you put all those factors into a bowl, eventually, you know, you start getting a, a, a pretty good product out of it. Yeah. So if I remember when I was, um, uh, looking at stuff, you've got one son that is graduating and one son going to be a junior, right? One son going off to Northern Illinois or Northern Iowa. Yeah, Ethan's going to Northern Iowa and then uh, Braden will be a junior and then my youngest son uh, will be in sixth grade next year. Nice. So he'll get an opportunity to get on that FHSAA uh, kind of spotlight. 
Uh, that's that's the goal. That's what we're trying for. You know, uh, he's got some work to do and some uh, some growing up to do. But yeah, he's uh, he, he's in it. You know, he's he's following the uh, protocol pretty well so far. Good for you. And I saw how uh, I read the article of how amazing. Um, obviously, this state was was uh, this this year was amazing for you just to see just to see your older son kind of finish off the way he needed to and then go on to college. But last year when he got that first one, right, I, I heard that the emotions were just amazing. I mean, you guys were just jumping up and down and it was just a feeling like you can't, you can't describe. Yeah. Yeah. Last year was definitely huge that way. You know, he had, uh, you know, he was having a lot of success in middle school and he had beaten, I don't know, you know, how many state champs when he was in middle school. And then, uh, you know, thought he was uh, thought he was going to win it as a freshman, and and it didn't happen. And then uh, you know, same thing as sophomore year, and uh, it was tough. You know, those uh, I think you start sometimes weighing out. You know, like is it the feeling of winning that you value so much, or is that feeling of not losing? You know, like what 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 do you what do you cherish more? But um, yeah, it was kind of like you know the cat off the back, or you know just the relief uh, or a lot of relief of pressure. You know, um, you know he was good enough to 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 win, you know, a couple of years there and just, you know, things didn't work out for him. So I was really proud of him. You know, it was one of those things where I, I feel like you had to dig through some, some adversity and, uh, you know, kind of, kind of get the monkey off the back and, and go get that first one done. So yeah, it was a special year. Well, that's awesome. So uh, I'm, I'm going to get into, so I've got, I got sent um, a bunch of questions here. So I'm going to get into them and we'll, we'll do that. And then we'll kind of come back around to, to, um, back to, you know, Jesuit and what you're doing and all that stuff. So sure. uh, the first question I had is, what's a typical practice look like uh, at Jesuit or Tiger Club, your high school wrestling? Um, you know, I think we we do, um, you know, there's no no magic. I mean, we it's a lot of fundamentals, you know, we, we, we pound fundamentals every single day, you know, and I think we really try to get a balance of, you um, high level instruction with, with a, a high level of intensity. You know, I think both are essential. You know, um, we kind of have a motto that I had, in, you know, adopted from my high school coach, but nothing works unless you do. So, you know, I always kind of go back to like, why is somebody like Jordan Burroughs, you know, can can take down anybody in the world with a double leg and yet one kid can't, can't score a point with a double leg, you know? And so, um, you know, we just, we really pound the fundamentals hard. And, and uh, like I said, though, I think we try to, make sure that we're getting the level of the intensity that that's required to, to make those techniques work, you know, and, um, you know, we push them hard. We definitely push them hard. Um, we, we've got kids that are, uh, that are pretty bought in and they understand what's going to be required uh, of them when they come in the room and uh, we push them hard. You know, we, we try to maximize our time. You know, we're, we're not one of those programs that, you know, we don't practice for three and a half hours a day. You know, our, our goal is we're going to get, uh, four hours of working in two hours, you know, and we're going to get in there and there's very little downtime. There's very little, um, you know, free time. It's, it's well structured and, uh, it's, we, we try to keep it really efficient. Awesome. So, so when you have a tournament on Friday and Saturday, what does your practice week look like? Um, you know, we always pretty much build it up and then bring it back down. Um, you know, if, if, you know, most times we're competing that weekend before, so on a Monday, um, we usually come in and do a distance run, um, you know, kind of break down technique a little bit and then usually lift. Uh, we, we probably, you know, most times we don't, we don't wrestle too, too much on that Monday. Then usually Tuesday is pretty intense when Wednesday, uh, you know, we test them a little bit and then, um, you know, Thursday, we, we normally bring it back down, shorten it up a little bit and try to, uh, you know, get, hit those things that we really want to make sure they're focusing on in that weekend and, and, you know, any adjustments we've made from the week prior and, and uh, that type of thing. And uh, you know, just make sure they're ready to compete on Friday. Awesome. Awesome. So the next one is, so it's, it's, it's widely thought that you have the best coaching staff in the state. So how do you delegate and who does what best? Being that your staff is that tremendous. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're right. I mean, I'm I'm really blessed. You know, I, I um when I first started coming, you know, or even thinking about taking over to Jesuit, I um I talked to Mike Joyce. You know, I've known him my whole life. We we've always been pretty close. And um, 
you know, got him on board right away. And then, um, you know, I, I picked up uh, Coach Mason, you know, a couple of years ago. We were coaching, uh, I think it was, I don't even know, it was junior national team or cadet duels or something. But we started coaching a few of those teams together and talking. And, um, yeah, I mean, we've got guys with no egos, you know, and I think that really makes makes the, the, the biggest uh, difference, you know. I mean, I'm at a point that, you know, I want what's best for the program, and I think we have guys that are all like mindset that they want what's best for the program. You know, it's not um, – we've got nobody in there who's trying to compete for their own ego or, or trying to be the superstar, you know. Our, our goal is to make those kids better every single day. And, um, you know, so it, it – um, I mean, I think that kind of takes care of itself, you know. I mean, Coach Mason's really – taking over a lot of the stuff, you know, um, uh, I'm getting older. I mean, even though I don't want to, I'm getting older, um, you know, and, and, uh, you know, there's just, you know, any coach will tell you, you know, there's just so many different aspects of, of being a coach, you know, from the financial obligations to the scheduling. And then, so I just think, you know, as time's gone on, we've all kind of found our roles and, and, you know, and again, I think that's easy to do when everybody's kind of focused on the same, mindset or the same goal and and then that's just you know to make the program as as, as good as we can get it so um, oh, that's yeah awesome. it, it works out pretty easy it really does cool so the next one and i appreciate you letting me go through these because guys i'm telling you i got questions came in it's like you got to have a seal on ask them this no, so. <laughs> I'm overwhelmed. That's, that's really cool thank you uh so you were a longtime assistant under swenson at springstead yeah uh, what made you two work so well together um, you know, I think similar, I think a similar thing, you know, um, we were really close and, um, uh, you know, just, we, I mean, we were really close. Like our families are, are, we're still, you know, really, really tight. Um, our kids were all around similar age and, uh, you know, again, I just, I think when you got guys who really care about the program and, and, um, you know, you communicate a lot. It, it takes a lot of communication. You can't just walk into practice and wonder, you know, who's going to do what, you know, I mean, I, I think pretty much every day I've walked into the room, whether it was at Springstead or here, we've got a game plan. We know what's going to happen that day. There's no, there's no mysteries, you know, and, uh, and so like I said, it's just a similar situation. We got along really good. We didn't have egos. We just, uh, you know, we were trying to build something special and, and uh, you know, we've kind of put in a lot of hard work and it took care of itself. That's awesome. So, so this one came from Coach Scott. <laughs> All right. And he said, you can tell him it's from me. <laughs> he said, what makes you so mad every morning, every day? <laughs> you know, I think there's this big misconception that I'm mad all the time. I'm, I'm not really a mad guy, you know? I mean, uh, I'm a pretty serious guy, I think, for the most part, especially when it comes to to, uh, you know, things I really care about. Uh, but, you know, I'm a little bit of a control freak, you know, I'm a little, uh, I'm a little OCD about things. And, uh, you know, I always kind of have in my mind how I think things should be, be moving along. And uh, he thought that would I, make you laugh. Yeah. And when, uh, <laughs> when, you know, when, when they don't go that way, I, I get a little bit frustrated sometimes, you know, but uh, I think I've calmed down a lot with my, my <laughs> older age, you know, I mean, I, there were times when I was a kid, I look back and I'm like, wow, you know, I was uh, a little bit of a maniac, but uh, you know, it's all in fun. It's all in fun. Yeah. Now, some of these questions I got here now, you've already discussed kind of what Jesuits doing. Cause somebody asked what's Jesuit doing that most other schools aren't that has led to their current success, but you already spoke about what you guys do in your training regimen and, and how you practice. And um, with the talent, this one says with the talent they have, why are they not competing at more big name tournaments like LHB? Um, I mean, I think that's really just kind of growth of the program. You know, next year we are, um, we're going to the Ironman and we're going to um, quite a bit more. You know, we do in the off season, we, we, we hit just about every big one out there. You know, we got guys going to Fargo, Super 32, Grappler, that type of thing. Um, you know, I've, I've been asked that question a few times and, and it really comes down to, you know, we're building a program. And when you look at our program as a whole, we're a pretty new program. You know, if you look at where LHP was in their fourth or fifth year, they weren't doing the things they're doing, at, you know, where they're at now either, you know, and we've kind of, I don't want to say like jump the tracks a little bit, but, you know, we had this real, real strong sophomore class come in. So we have those guys who are able to compete at that level 
But again, you know, we're, we're not about the individuals, we're about the program. And so when I look at where our program's at, um, you know, just for those first years, you know, like there's a handful of guys on the team that, yeah, those tournaments would have been really good for, but there's another 70% of the team that, you know, they weren't ready for those type of tournaments, you know? And so, um, like I said, I think next year is kind of uh, a turning point for us that way. You know, I mean, we still have been traveling quite a bit. And like I said, in the off season, we, we hit the national circuit pretty hard, but um, you know, our, our, my, my goal is to develop a program, you know, and, yeah, uh, sure. and um, we've done that before. And I think, you know, with, with the coaching staff I have, we, we, we know what that takes and we put a lot of, thought into it so um I just think it's evolution you know like I said when you look at Lake Highland Prep if you look at their schedule their fourth or fifth year out of the gates um I think it's you know vastly different from from the schedule they're wrestling right now you know so um, and he'll tell you goal. that um and he'll tell you that I mean if you ever well you know him well I mean I've asked him I've heard him tell parents look I remember having two kids yeah for yeah. a couple of years and just trying to travel with those two kids so yeah, a program, and he's such a humble guy. So he's the first to tell you, hey, it, it, it doesn't start where it's at now. No program, right? No, uh, no, it's a long road. You know, it's a lot of work. And yeah, so that's, you know, kind of where we're at. Like I say, when I look at the program as a whole, we're a pretty, pretty young program. You know, even though they've had success in the past, um, you know, from when I took over and the, and the route we're going now, I mean, we're... Uh, we're a four-year program, you know, we're, we're building on our fifth and sixth year here. So uh, I think you'll see some big changes in the future. That's awesome. And so um, a couple of these are kind of different versions of the same question. So I won't ask that. Uh, this one says, um, being named coach of the year multiple times, how has that impacted your evolution as a coach? Uh, you know, I'll be honest. I mean, I almost get embarrassed by that kind of stuff. You know, I mean, it, it's cool. I, I mean, I respect the hell out of it. I, it, you know, I'm, I've just always, uh, I, I kind of grew up pretty, pretty uh, blue collar, humble kind of person. You know, I don't like to, uh, I, you know, when, when people say, Hey, you know, you got this award, I say, it's great for the program, you know, and that's really how I feel. I mean, I don't, I don't think any coach of the year award should be to one person. You know, if, if you've got a coaching staff, like I do, I mean, any award that I receive is, 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 you know, an award that goes to the whole coaching staff, you know, I mean, it's, it's by far a group effort, you know, there's, there's no one individual that, that is um, doing something that somebody else isn't, you know, so it's great for our program. I mean, I love that we're getting that recognition. I mean, I'm very humbled by it. Um, but, you know, I really feel like those awards go to our coaching staff. That's awesome. And then uh, blah, blah, blah. Here we go. We already spoke about how awesome it is to be sharing your coach's corner with your coaches. Uh, this one says that this is the last one as far as the Q&A that I've received. Sure, um, sure. Because a lot of them, there was a lot, but they were like different versions of the same stuff. Sure, already sure. touched on that stuff. This one says the main stable of top Jesuit wrestlers are all heading into their junior year. Is there any upcoming kids from the feeder club that uh, – you see could be making an impact right away. Yeah, yeah, we do have some. I, I don't think we've got a lot of the real named kids like we did, you know, with that core of kids, but we got a lot of kids that I'm sure in, you know, a couple of years, people are going to know who they are. You know, um, I, I think our youth club went through kind of a metamorphosis, you know, we had Coach Joyce was, was you know, we had Caveman and we brought that in and, um, you know, he was getting, getting older and getting to a different point of his life. And, you know, he was kind of, you know, we, we sat down and talked about it a few years ago and he was like, look, you know, I, you know, I, I just, you know, I, I'm going to retire. I want to spend some more time with my wife. I promised her I would do that kind of thing. I want to be involved, but not at the level I am. And, and I completely understand that, you know, so um, we're kind of taking the program, you know, trying to build it back up to where, you know, we've got national quality kids every year coming in, but, you know, um, right now, I don't think we have a ton of name kids like we did with this sophomore class, but uh, we got, we got some talented kids in there. You know, we got a lot of talented kids. Our numbers have grown pretty tremendously. We probably got almost a hundred kids in the club now. And uh, um, you know, yeah, I'm, the, the future is really bright. I, I definitely think that um, it's hard when you're coaching the high school team and the youth club, like, like coach Mason and I are, um, you know, you, your time gets divvied up, you know, only so many ways. So we're trying to figure out some of those aspects. Um, you know, bringing Kevin Nordstrom in has been huge with that. And uh, he might be somebody in the future that kind of maybe takes a little bit bigger role with our youth club. 
But uh, I think in the future here, there's going to be a lot of named kids that that are, uh, you know, working the circuit pretty hard. Well, and I know something that um, I, I get asked to ask coaches and uh, and folks coming on a lot is the state of Florida wrestling. So obviously you've been around Florida wrestling since since you were a state placer in 93 and um, and before that a youth wrestler. So from from your times back then to, to what we see now, and especially these young kids coming through the feeder programs, uh, where can Florida wrestling get to? We've already seen where they've, they've made some top five finishes, some top two finishes at big tournaments. Um, couldn't, can we be a Pennsylvania? Can we be an Illinois? Can we be a California? I mean, I think we can. Um, you know, I, I, I think there's, definitely um you know value and or or something to evolution you know and when you look at states like pennsylvania and ohio um you know and california jersey a lot of those you know powerhouse type states there's something to it when you know my my great-grandfather wrestled and my 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 uncle was a two-time all-american from so and so and that type of thing and i think when you look at florida as a whole um, you know, even just as a state, you know, how many people do you know that are even from Florida? You know, it's a, it's a pretty transient state. You know, you've got people who have pretty much moved here, um, you know, from all over the country. And I don't, I think, you know, so you don't have a lot of those deep roots, you know, like I, I always joke about, I'm a big Bucks fan. I go to all the games, you know, but there'll be more, uh, Giants fans in, in Bucks stadium than Bucks fans, you know, and, and almost any team because so many people have moved from different areas. So oh, yeah, as a, as a Dolphins fan, I mean, I'd go in, there'd be jet fans. Yeah. Yeah. Fans, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, and obviously, you know, winning takes care of a lot of that, but what I'm getting at is I just don't think we've had that longevity and that deep roots, you know, like Iowa and these other States where, you know, kids wrestle because it's, Hey, it's what, it's what we do, you know? And, and, uh, I think we're starting to get that, but I think we're maybe only a generation or two generations deep, you know, like we're seeing a lot of youth wrestlers now with coaches that are my age or a little bit older where, you know, Hey, I wrestled in the state and now my son is, you know, but I just don't think we have those deep, deep roots, which over time that'll, that'll change. Um, but uh, I just, I think there's something to that mentality and that culture. And I think that's one of the things that really sets those States apart. And then obviously Florida is a beautiful state. You know, there's a lot of things you could be doing where, you know, when you're in Minnesota and PA, what the hell do you want to do when it's, uh, you know, 10 degrees outside, you know? So uh, yeah, uh, I had a couple you know, of, a lot of factors coaches. that I think go into it. Yeah. I had, um, I had BB on and I had Olsen on and both Illinois wrestlers. And I said, Florida. And they're like, why not? Yeah. We came down here. And we're thinking, man, if we can get, if we can make good wrestling down here and we can sit by the ocean yeah, in this type of weather, <laughs> yeah, I, you, know, you can't beat it. So yeah, I think as those, as these kids now that we have in college start to get off and come back and start to have kids and be in the wrestling yeah. rooms. So, and, well. and that's a big part of it too. You know, when we don't, we really haven't, you know, we're just starting to get on the college scene and when you don't have, that trickling back down into the, into the youth kids, you know, to where kids are, uh, you know, Hey, I'm going two hours away and wrestling at a D one program. And then, you know, graduating and staying in the community and coaching in the community, you know, all that builds it. And we haven't, you know, we haven't had that happening yet. So, you know, all those things kind of factor in, but I think we've got some of the best athletes in the country, you know, and I think we, uh, I think we've got, you know, we're, we're starting to get the level of coaching that these other States do. So, I mean, I think the future is really bright. I don't see any reason why we can't be, you know, just as good as anybody out there. But I, I think it's just like building a program, you know, it takes some time and it takes some some culture change. Yeah, I think that's been the sediment. A lot of the guys have said, man, if they could get just one school to say, hey, we, we have a D1 program in Florida, we can keep a lot of the kids here. That yeah. being said, here's, uh, here's Ricky, man. I, I don't know if you've been listening, but we went through some really cool stuff. No, I actually good. just got on. I was on with a client. I was trying to rush the guy off the phone, but I had to, I had to get the sale, man. <laughs> there yeah. you go. That's it. You got to close the deal. <laughs> exactly. yeah, so I'll, um, I'll, uh, I'll revert to you now. I'll turn it over to you. We had, you know, I've been getting, like I told them, people were like, Hey, get Sal on. We want to hear from Sal. So uh, yeah, man. we got him on and I got a lot of questions DM to me. So we went over that and um, it's your turn, man. I, I had a pleasure speaking with them and it's great to meet you. And I, I hope to see you in the rooms once we get back up and running and um, uh, 
congratulations on obviously your son finishing off his uh, his high school career and getting off to college. Now you can become a, a spectator of him and not a coach. Uh, <laughs> yeah, fun. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me on and thanks for uh, what you're doing for the sport, man. It's good stuff. It's great. Yes, sir, my pleasure. Go ahead, Ricky. It's all yours, man. All right. Uh, I'll probably ask the same things you asked. I don't even know what you guys talked about. So <laughs> no worries, man. We'll hit it. All right. So um, you started at, at Springstead, right? In Florida? Yeah, sure did. Yep. Okay. That's where I remember you from. And yep. back then, I know your kids were, were little. I remember them at the youth tournaments. Um, you, ha you have two boys? I got three. My youngest, three uh, sixth grade. So yeah, I've got the uh, okay. two in high school and then a, a younger one. All right. And the one now, what are the, gr what grades are they in right now? Uh, so Ethan's a senior. He's graduating, going to Northern Iowa. Braden will be a, a, a junior next year. He just finished his sophomore year, finishing up his sophomore year. And uh, Mason will be going into sixth grade. Okay. So Ethan, what weight did he wrestle this year? 45, 145. 45. So yeah. Braden, Braden won a state title this year and last year, correct? Yeah. He won it at 120 this year and 120 last right. year. Yeah. Okay. And he beat the same kid both years, I think, right? In yeah. the finals? Yeah. Crazy. And Hokey both years. Yeah, yep. for sure, man. And the kid's a stud, man. He's, oh, he's uh, no doubt a stud. Yeah. We've, we've, you know, Braden and him have wrestled, you know, shit going back. I don't know, you know, 10 years probably now, you know, crazy. I mean, wrestling and this stuff. year was sudden death, yeah. right? Wasn't it Ricky? Wasn't yeah. It yep. Sudden death match? I think last year was overtime too, or no? No, last year was was regulation, but this okay. year it went into overtime. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I was watching that match. That was a crazy match. And then he 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 threw him and I was like, Holy shit, what just happened? And yeah, place, no, that place was, erupted. Fireworks in that match for sure, man. Those are uh those are ones you like to pay some money for, you know, it's entertaining. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, listen, man, it, you hate, look, one kid has to lose. I mean, obviously, but when, when both kids are so damn good and give so much into that match, you, you just hate to see that one of them has to lose. I mean, obviously you're happy your kid wins, but it, it just sucks. But you know what, Van Hokey, is that how you pronounce it? Van Hokey? Yeah. Yeah. That kid, that kid's got a huge bright future. No uh, doubt he'll write his own ticket. He'll go anywhere he wants, but, um, Absolutely. so, so no Ethan's going to Northern. I get him so confused. Who's going to Northern Iowa, Ethan, Ethan's going to Northern Iowa. So he'll be wrestling for, for Schwab, right? Doug yep. Schwab's there. Yep. Very, very good school. They got a good program, man. Northern Iowa's tough. They really do, man. I mean, they were ranked as high as I think like six or seventh this year in the beginning. And then they got some injuries, but, um, yeah, he Schwab's doing an awesome job out there. You know, we had we had went to a bunch of schools. Um, NC State was real hot after him, and we went to Minnesota. We went went to a lot of places. But when we spent time with Schwab, he flew down here in I think April and spent uh, you know like a whole day with us. And just after we spent the time with him, uh, he's just a great, great human being. You know, like yeah. a great person. And that was really important for me. You know, to know my son's going somewhere where he's around great Absolutely. people. You know, and and obviously they're they're producing over there too, you know? So um, it's just a real blue collar, you know, it, it's kind of what Ethan's used to, you know, there's no smoke and mirrors. It's, it's, uh, you know, it's just, they go in there and they bust their ass and yeah. uh, Ethan just loved it there. So. Um, and it's yeah, gotta be uh, easy to get coaches to your house with that pool in the background. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> Especially well, from Illinois and Iowa. And, and those yeah, states. you know, it's uh, <laughs> snow and cornfields or, uh, you know, the pool. Hey, man, I'm, I'm, I'm a Florida boy, man. I love it. Yeah, I tell you what, um, talking about Coach Schwab, Doug Schwab, back in 2008, when my, my oldest son, Nick, who now is coach at Kaiser University, yeah. uh, assistant coach, he, he was going to go to, uh, he wanted to go to Buena Vista University in Storm Lake, Iowa, D3 school. Schwab was the coach. So he goes on his visit. He's like, comes home. He's like, I'm going, dad. I'm, I'm like, dude, it was your first school. What do you mean you're going? You got to go see other school. No, I'm going, I'm going. And then Schwab leaves and he uh, goes to Northern uh, Iowa. Yeah. And he, he wrestles for Savon Cole, which whatever it is what yeah. it is but um yeah schwab is very highly regarded he's got he's got great credentials he's been around a long time he was a great competitor and now he's a great coach so no that's awesome i'm very very happy for you appreciate um, that man thank you yeah jesuit is is on the rise man it's a program that's considered one of the top programs in the state um i mean you've, you've just done an unbelievable job sal where where where, where do you want to see jesuit go from here i mean do you, are you going to be going to the to the 
big tournaments, the Ironmans, the 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 Beasts of the East. What, what what's going to happen with with Jesuit? What what's your vision? Yeah, that's definitely. I mean, I, you know, Dan and I were just talking about that. You know, somebody had asked, you know, like how come Jesuit's not you know wrestling a schedule like LHP yet? You know, and I basically said just because you know when you look at it, our program is pretty new. I mean, like we've got some really good kids right now, but you know, there's only the fifth year. You know, and so right. I think if you look at where LHP was at in their fifth year. Um, but yeah, next year we just committed to the Iron Man. We're going to the Iron Man. Um, I just talked to ice and actually we're going to hit that tournament, the the single tire Memorial, which obviously it's just a awesome thing to do for, for that family. But Blair's going to be there, you know? And so, I mean, those guys in our state, um, that, that was actually the same weekend we've gone to the prep slam in the past, which is a really good tournament. But I feel like with, with Blair in our own backyard, you know, we got to go do that. And I, and I'd love to do that for that family. So, um, yeah, n- next year, our, our schedule changes quite a bit. And, and that's, you know, pretty much going to be the map going forward. Um, you know, when I was at Springstead, we were nationally ranked a few years and we had one state titles. And, I, you know, my goal has always been, you know, I want to be the best team in the country, you know. And um, and when I looked at, at Jesuit, I felt like we've got the resources here, you know, to do that. And when I spent some time here, it was really, you know, one of the deciding factors, you know, I just I, f- I feel like there's no reason we can't be a Blair or a St. Ed's or a, or a St. Right. Paris Graham or something like that. So, yeah. um, you know, that's our goal and it's obviously going to take time to get there. And, um, you know, there's things about the school that I didn't know when I got here, you know, like there's a lot of challenges. The school academically is brutal. You know, it's very, very hard. Um, yeah. You know, there, there's no freebies, you know, the parents are going to have to pay money. That's It's a hard school to get into. They, you know, I think they turn down almost a thousand kids a year. You know, there's about wow. 180, there's 180 spots roughly each class. And out of that 180, there's almost a thousand kids who apply, you know, so, um, you know, there's challenges then. And so those obviously pose a little bit of a challenge trying to build the program to the oh, level yeah. we want, but, sure. um, you know, down the road. Yeah. That's, that's, you know, that's what I'm trying to do. And, uh, you know, I'm building a staff that, that I think is, is second to none. You know, I've, I've, we've brought some guys in that are, that are some of the best I've ever been around. And so, uh, you know, I think we got a lot of good pieces in place. You know, we just got to keep building the youth club and uh, working out some of the kinks and making sure these kids are ready to, uh, to handle the school academically and financially by the time they get there. Yeah, that's definitely a key piece is, is the feeder program. Um, now, my son went to St. Thomas Aquinas in Fort Lauderdale, as you know, and they have uh, financial aid that you can actually apply for. Is Jesuit the same? Do they offer financial aid? They do. They, they offer financial aid. It, it's done by a, a, a company that's not affiliated with them. That's all they do is financial aid for a lot of schools. And it's truly financially based, you know, so yeah, for um, sure. They, um, you know, they, they figure out the numbers and, and, you know, they, they make it, you know, they, they make it where it's feasible, but you're going to have to make some sacrifices, you know, they definitely don't throw you the freebies, you know? And so, um, right. You know, again, that's where I think just, you know, we're trying to get to where we're educating these parents and getting them, you know, aware of, you know, what's in front of them and making sure that, you know, they do what they can do if they really want to get their kids into the program. Yeah, I mean the parents are gonna definitely have to make a sacrifice, but you know what? The what what's the what's the payoff for them? You know, their kids getting a great education, and the kids gonna be in a great wrestling program. So if they want to go to college to wrestle, there's no better place than Jesuit for them. You know, in that area. So yeah, I mean that's how I feel. I mean I'm I'm really confident. You know, it's like selling a product. I mean I, I'm really confident in our product. You know, if you want you know, top level education, you know, an amazing experience. I mean, the school's a, you know, I'm learning it firsthand, just having my kids in there, you know, it's just a really special place. You know, there's things yep. that go on at this school that you just don't find in, in average high schools, you know, and the, uh, the resources and the connections uh, it's, you know, it's crazy. Like when you look at every graduating class, what these kids are going off in the world and doing, you yeah. know, it's amazing, you know, like the average, I mean, it's like a hundred percent are accepted in the college and out of those, hundred percent. It's like over 90% graduate college, you know, it's just, they, that's, uh, that's impressive. It really is, you know? So those are the kind of things that I feel like, you know, like you're saying like, yeah, the parents got to make some sacrifices, but in the end, I don't think you're going to be disappointed with, with what your kids are getting out of it. You know, exactly. I think it pays off it. I think it plays into wrestling, you know, you, you bust your ass and you put a lot yeah. of hard work in, but in the end you get something for it too, you know, hey, someone Absolutely. posted here. Tell coach about the dragon tattoo from Lake Minnetonka. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got to hear about that. Oh, man. So, 
So <laughs> in college, I got I got these two dragon tattoos on my leg, which, you know, <laughs> back in the day in the early 90s, these dragons seemed like they were badass, you know, but, but now it's the, uh, you know, the, it's the brunt of many a joke, you know, oh, that's <laughs> so kids, funny. everybody, you know, so oh. yeah. It's, yeah. I, so I, that would get a now. I tell these kids, hey, you think this stuff that you're doing now, it looks really cool, but right. you know, when you get to be about 40 something, you know, are you going to look back and think, oh. man, that was badass. I'm really glad yeah, I did that. that. Know, so. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Well, I got the ibis crushing, wow, the, uh, wow. crushing the gator. Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. That's huge, man. <laughs> so I that like seemed like, that seemed really like a good idea at the time, huh? Yeah, I just did it like a week ago. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. The new word to permanent, you know? Right uh, before, uh, wow. permanent. Right before this. Well, that uh, is hilarious. Man, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on. I don't know, Ricky. Did you get some? Uh, did you get some good ten questions together for him? Uh, yeah, I got him. I got his questions. He's getting the same ones that everyone gets. I can't. I can't do him dirty. He's got to have the same. <laughs> got to play fair with him. All right, All Sal. Right. We're gonna ask you ten questions. One word answers. You ready? Got it. Folk style or freestyle? Folk style. Headgear or no headgear? No headgear. Singlet or two piece? Singlet. Coke or Pepsi? Don't drink either, but I'm going Coke. All right. Ice cream cake or birthday cake? Got to go ice cream. Salt water or fresh water? Salt all day. Rap or country? Country. Pickup truck or car? Pickup truck, 100%. Popeyes or Chick-fil-A? <laughs> Chick-fil-A. <laughs> Chick-fil-A. Ocean or swimming pool? Ah, man, that, you know, that's a tough one. That's a tough <laughs> one. If I can go a 50 50 on anyone, that's going to be the one, you know? Awesome. Awesome. A Jesuit or the rest of the country? Jesuit. <laughs> Jesuit. Jesuit. <laughs> there you go. So, oh, one last question. So, sure. what, who are the, who are the guys that are currently wrestling in college that are Jesuit grads? Um, you know, since I've been there, I mean, obviously Julian was at our school for a year, right. but then he, you know, he went to Blair. Yeah, um, he'll be coming on next week. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. He just you mentioned on here, we can talk for a few he minutes. He called me. Yeah. So Julian called me. I'm talking to him. Sal jumps on, and I'm like, "Hey, Julian, I'm getting ready to jump off. I've got Sal Basile coming on." He goes, "Hey, that's my coach." So I put him <laughs> on speakerphone, and oh, then that's started awesome. talking before we even went live. So. It was pretty cool. The timing was perfect. Isn't he just an awesome kid, Sal? Yeah, yeah, sure is, man. Him and Ethan are pretty close, you know. And, um, yeah, you know, just he came here and, you know, with the situation of moving from Miami, he used to spend a lot of time at my house. And, um, you know, just talking to him when he comes around this summer, we'll probably get him up here for a while. But, yeah, man, he's awesome. a talented kid, man. He's, you know, I'm excited for him, man. He's got a great future ahead of himself. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, he's like, hey, I'm driving up to Yanni's house Thursday. Should I have him on the show with us? And I'm like, oh, no, we don't want to talk to him. Just you, <laughs> and he's like, No, we can talk to both of you. That's cool. Are they <laughs> going to come on together or, or individually? I think they're going to come on together. He's, oh, he's driving up there. Okay. I told him, I said, look, I don't, I don't have any. I, I like talking wrestling. You can bring on. Yeah, awesome. Cool with awesome. That. Yeah, that's Fun awesome. Yeah. So, so, yeah, so on Julian that. and – um. What's that other kid's name? Bus Busser? Yeah, Adam Boozer. He had, Boozer. He had Boozer. went to uh, John Carroll, and then he had That's a right. lot of issues. He had surgery with his knee, and then oh, uh, he had to have ACL surgery, and then it got infected. He ended up having to have, like, two other surgeries, and it really pretty much ended his career. Like, he oh, lost, man. like, man, over a year and a half just, you know, in and out with surgeries and recovery. I feel bad for him, and he really had a – just a rough break, you know, it, it's uh, hard to come back when you miss a year, two years, and then try to compete, especially with injury. It's almost impossible. Absolutely. Yeah. Just mentally and physically, you know, it just really beat him up. You know, he was really, yep. you know, down for a while. And then, um, unfortunately his mom passed away, um, right, just a little right. bit over a year ago, you know, so, um, he's just staying local, getting his school and done and whatnot, Good. you know, but, uh, you know, he's, he's a kid. I, I, I you know, he would have done really well in college. Absolutely. You know, kid had a great, yeah, great man. head on his shoulders great parents so um yeah it's kind of a shame you know but unfortunately you hear about those stories a lot you know those are just part of the sport you know part of any sport i guess yeah man if you talk to him tell him man hit me up if there's anything i could ever do for him i love the kid he's a great kid man so that, man. yeah we'll do more we'll than do. Going to help him in any way 
That's awesome, man. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely. All right, Sal, it was great having you, man. Anytime you want to come back and, and talk with us, we would love to have you. I appreciate yeah, it, man. I, I, I appreciate the, what uh, you're doing for the wrestling community, man. Oh, that no that forum is awesome, man. I mean, I was telling Dan, you know, anytime these kids and programs can get some publicity and, you know, just get a little recognition, I mean, that's right. You know it, man. Our sport doesn't get that. So it's, it's, it's good stuff, man. That's why I started the whole thing a couple of years ago and it's grown into something that I never even imagined it would. I mean, we got almost 9,000 members, awesome, man. man. Right. Awesome. It's, it's the go-to place for Florida wrestling. Everybody yeah. comes here for their, you know, results and, and, and tournaments and just to post stuff. I love it, man. Yeah. And you're doing a good job. You know I mean? Thank I was, you. Back in the day we had scout, you know, but there's yeah. all those problems with it and that kind of thing. And that's yeah. always part of the, thing of keeping the keeping the uh you know gotta keep the integrity down. yeah you, the integrity. you know but you're doing a good job with that man thank That's, you uh it's a good thing man we we uh we appreciate it for awesome. sure and i know awesome. he, uh given given me the opportunity to bring this show to the wrestling platform or the florida wrestling has been great and you know part of my goal too is once we get wrestling going again and we have these rooms and i'm able to to be out in public again is is also to have guys on that are getting ready to you know, hey, how are you feeling going into the Ironman? How are you feeling going to Michigan yeah, Rapper? You yeah. know, it'd be cool to talk to these kids and get their mindset and not give up any secrets. Just hey, or yeah. even grab a kid after a big after a big win after he cools down a little bit just to interview him. Hey, man, how how you you know what was that match all about? Yeah, how do you feel? Bring that flow f platform to exactly. a local level. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah. it's really cool. It really well, is. That's what Dan and I are going to try to do. We've been talking about that, so we'll get it going. It takes yeah. time, baby bring, steps. Bring you and Walker on at the same time, going into Osceola. Yeah, man, I'd be all about it, man. Nah, <laughs> I and mean, Danny get along great, so now nah, it'd be cool. That'd be all good. Awesome. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Hey, Ricky, why I got you on here, man. I yeah. saw you were posting about some families, you know, struggling yes. or whatever. Um, I was going to, you know, private message you, man. But, I mean, I'm up here in Tampa. I don't know if there's families here. But, you know, man, we'd always love to help out with stuff like that. So, awesome. you know, maybe just on a private level, shoot me a message or whatever. Okay. And let me know, like, if there's – or even if it's a way of, hey, we can get some money down to somebody and they can go get some gift cards or something, like – we okay. would, uh, you know, we'd love to help out. So just, just let me know oh, if man. you contribute anyway, you know. I will. Awesome. I actually, I had a Federal Express rang my doorbell. Somebody sent, um, they, they ordered directly online from Publix two $100 gift cards for Publix. So I have $200 that's now. Awesome. And I've got a family that I was already contacted about that's going in the mail tomorrow. That family's awesome. going to get yeah, to fill a, up their There's a lot fridge. of good things happening. You know, I, I've got... Uh, I've got BB coming back on um, tomorrow to update us on the mats for kids. Oh, he's, he's been, he's been raising, doing good. Yeah, he's been raising money down there by you guys because uh, kids can't afford to put mats in the house and do the virtual training with him. So he's raising money for that as well. We'll have an update awesome. on that tomorrow. I think he's gotten over 25 mats into these yeah. houses so far. So yep. that's another great thing that he's doing too. So between Ricky and BB, they're yeah, there's some good stuff out there to help these families. I think that's the cool thing that, you know, when you have times like this, I think the wrestling community, you know, <clears> probably <throat> more than anyone, but you see that type of stuff happening. And I think that's oh, something yeah. that really uh, speaks volumes. You know, it's it's a, it's a cool thing about our, our sport and our culture. I think no matter how much you're competitive, you know, there there comes a level of respect you have for people who are who are doing this sport and putting the time in and, and yep. doing what we do, you know? So, yeah, uh, like I said, I was, I was mentioning it to my wife. And then when I went on the site the other day, it seemed like it was down and then I just saw it back up. So just let me know, man, if there's some way we can help out, we'd love to. I will. Awesome. I appreciate that. Sal. all right, man. Thanks for having me on guys. Thank right, you. Buddy. See you, man. Take care guys. Bye-bye. All right. Y'all take care.